Hey there, beloved Essential Pioneers. Welcome to another video with me, Polona. Well, here's the thing. Today's video I want to make about soul desires and creating from a space of our heart. Because nowadays so many people ask me about this. You know, how do you recognize, you know, between, how do you discern between the two? You know, desire coming from the soul or desire coming from the ego or I'm so attached to outcomes, you know, how do I piece myself down and how do I calm myself and how do I go through this process and there's a lot of comments right now I feel about this so that is why today I just spontaneously felt guided to write the short status which I'll read to you now and I'll expand further on it I also was talking about this yesterday in my video interview I had with a friend and I will upload this I will share this when it is uploaded so nowadays people often ask themselves how to recognize which desires are coming from the ego and which ones are of the soul. In truth, this is very simple to observe and recognize. Soul desires are created through soul essences. You know, we can tell them like love, freedom, joy, peace, abundance, prosperity. They are service oriented. So within all that is, service to all that is. They're always neutral and unattached to outcomes or expectations. And they always already feel, you know, like they are in the now. They, they're felt here and now already because that is where the heart resides. In this space, there's no control, no no pushing it because you already know it is true. Because in, in the heart, all timelines merge as one. So anything that is not coming from that space is not based on a soul desire. So one thing that is also accompanied here is what I like to address most is the component of being in service. In my life, my main guide has always been service ever since my awakening and my inner awakening to my true self, to my individualized presence, who I am and what is the potential, the highest potential I am to embody here in the earth and what I am to share and what are my tasks and what is my purpose. So whatever I've been going through, whatever I've been experiencing has led me back to service. It was always about service. It was always about giving. It was always about freely sharing myself. And this is the component I discovered within myself. So whenever I returned to service, no matter what I was experiencing personally, I was always supported. I was always in peace, abundance, being free, free spirit being, you know, just serving from my authentic space. And when I was always focused on service, everything came to me. I did not have to fish for it. I did not have to go outside of myself to find it. Things found me because that is the principle of co-creating through the heart, which is the soul. The soul is, like I explained in my last video, the soul is the feminine component. You know, this is our creation side of us. It is that divine feminine. So divine feminine flows. Divine feminine radiates out. It embodies and then everything comes to it. We magnetize it. So when you will have another feeling of it, like you need to struggle, like you need to do, like you need to push. And a lot of people now ask me, yeah, I get it. I get all these things, you know, I understand them. But why is it still so difficult? It's difficult because you're not aligned yet. Because, of course, also you have a perception of things needing to be difficult. And I oftentimes ask people, why do you believe? Where is this belief coming from? Why do you believe you have to struggle? Why do you believe it has to be difficult? What brings you to this space? Whatever is difficult, whatever feels like it's not flow, is not align in alignment with divine love. And like I said, divine love is love, wisdom, and power, the trinity. It's our sacred nature. It's our sacred heart space. So whenever we bring ourselves in alignment with that, in perfect unison and equilibrium, we're always in that space of creating through our heart. And the heart is the soul, so the soul creates through soul essences. So you will no longer say, oh, I need this, or I need to be with this person, or I need to have a house, or I need to have this job. You will no longer hunt for things. You will embody the soul essences that already have that included in them. Like you will be peace. You will radiate it out. You will be love. So love means allowing the space of all this to unfold, and you will be self-empowered. You will be power. Love, wisdom, power, that is what creates in the new. And things will just flow in your life, and you will be randomly seeing whether you're aligned with something, whether that is in alignment with your soul essences or not. Whatever is not coming from that space, when it, whatever is still not in alignment with service, you will still find hardship within it. Because why? Let me explain this. Service does not mean, oh, you know, someone says, I need to do my purpose. I need to do it. It's not, it has nothing to do with control. It's your natural state of your soul. Because every soul 
<laughs> you know, it's it's basic component and desire is to to share, it's to exchange energy, it's to be in flow. You know, the constant flow within life and creation. The soul is always about growth and expansion. So when you learn something, you know, remember it, so to say. If you're really coming from the soul, you won't just learn it for you because you'll also recognize the oneness with everything. So you will also have the desire to share it, to ripple it out. And that's being of service. Whatever you learn, you also teach. So whatever you, you receive, you also give. That is being of service. And when you will be aligned through the service within your authenticity of your authentic soul vibration and signature, that's when everything will come to you. And that's what ego desires fall away. So notice yourself, observe yourself. It's very easy to know these, these things when you're coming from a space of simplicity. You will see, uh -huh, what is still holding me back from not already being this, what I am? What makes me believe that it's something out there instead of here? Because in the new, we need to embody all the essences. We are to also um, have being reflected in our physical daily realities and our lives that we're creating for ourselves. We no, no longer need to have this control or to create through these egoic senses. Because in the now, we already feel our truth, our signature, our unique path as it already is. And then we just observe things coming through as challenges. Sometimes there'll be challenges. They'll be initiating us into this state where we can say, okay, do I, do I take less than my uniqueness? It's not less. It's just not your thousand percent mirror. Or do I really just go with that? Because that's when you will truly be able to observe what you're in flow with, what you're in alignment with. So if it's still difficult, struggle, you know, pain, resistance, it means you're resisting the flow of divine love. You're not going the flow of river. You're, you're trying to swim up against the current. So don't ask me. You know, I don't have the answer why it is hard for you. You need to observe yourself. You need to go within and feel. But let me say this one more thing that I also explained in my video yesterday, with the video interview. One very important aspect is now we're all releasing so much to be emptied out, to allow the spirit life through embodiment of our soul to totally fill us up, but with nothing else but divine love. So in this process of releasing, there's a void. And many people don't know about the void. They, they're scared of the void. They don't understand it because they don't know what to do with it because they're not yet taking the power. You see, that's where the, the attribute of power comes in. Your power to co-create whatever you wish to desire because you're not attuned to it. You're not even used to it because you were so much in the old and there's so much patterning here that still makes you think that, okay, you know, it needs to come from somewhere else. I don't know how to fill my cup. Well, let love fill your cup, even though you don't know, but you have to open your whole being up to it. It's like, you know, releasing is just one part of the process. And then there's the void. And the void is here for you to remember your co-creative state. You are a divine human. You can be all of it. You are a co-creator of this reality. So you, when you're coming to this void, it will be up to you to just bring that from the other, you know, dimensions that already exist. Your highest potentials, you're just drawing forth and anchoring what you wish to. You're deciding, you're deciding what to be aligned with or not. You're just by, just by consciously observing it. So this way you're becoming a co-creator, not by struggling for it, not by jumping for it, not by chasing or hunting it, just by embracing it and pulling it through your magnetism into a reality. And that happens naturally without any sort of ego desire. It just happens so naturally when you're attuned to life, to creation through divine love, which is your essence. So when you'll be observing yourself, you will see that. And if you still have that feeling of, like I des uh, described yesterday in the interview, of that fear of choice, because a lot of people are afraid to choose for themselves because they're just used to everything already being put out there for them. And they just say, okay. But aren't we, you know, tired of just saying, okay, and nodding our heads, even though our heart says, no, I want something different because that's in alignment with my soul, with my heart's desires, which are already in the now, not somewhere out there. You know, if you have to wait for something or someone, it's not that you become it, you radiate it out and then something else might find you and whatever is not yours will leave and whatever is yours, even if it leaves for a certain moment, it will always return to you because what is yours is yours. And what is not is not. And, and this is not about position. This means about really being in line with your path. 
So by observing, you can see these things. And the fear of power is often related with fear of making choices because we oftentimes think that if we make a certain choice, there's a certain outcome that's going to follow that won't be, you know, good, it'll be bad. That's how we reference it. That's how we label it. But there is no such thing. You see, even if sometimes we might consider that we made a bad choice, even that thing led us to something that is such a blessing for us on our path for our soul growth and expansion that we won't see it as bad anymore when you come to that clarity, when we come into that space. So it's all a process of integration. It's all in flow. You see, you're, you're in flow with your growth. Embrace your growth. People are so much trying to be somewhere at a certain point that they're forgetting where they are now and cherishing and honoring that and respecting themselves and others as well on their journey and where they are in their process and not being attached to you know other people's processes, just being here and just wanting to fill their cups through their own heart desires. So one of the things also is when you shift, when you're releasing, that needs to be addressed here is how to shift because a lot of people say yeah okay it's hard and then they go into that space of being hard and they don't know how to move out of that space because the first phase is feel the feelings allow yourself to feel otherwise you can heal but then the second phase is okay now the moment has come for you to transcend this and a lot of people don't have the tools i mean they do but they have not developed them in a sense that they embody them they know they're out there they just don't know how to pull them down into their being into their body you know, version of being. So what they do is they stay in that feeling for too long. That's just one part of the process. When you release before that, you will, you, you needed to feel because you cannot release if you cannot feel what you're releasing. So you're feeling, you're releasing, then you're emptying the cup. And then now what? You see, in that space, you need to know how to work with energy. You need to know to move the energy. So when there's a void, you move the energy. You move the energy in you, you align with you, you align, you, sh you constantly shift your vibration. So one of the example is when people just constantly complain, they say, oh, I'm just stuck here, I'm stuck. You're not stuck, but your perception of being stuck prevents you from having to make choices and align with something new and creating your heart desires in the now because you don't know how to use your tools that are already within you. You have all the tools, I don't have them for you, I have them for me can just share and uplift them, you know, and uplift you with my experiences and my stories. But the thing here is, I'll give you one example. I had these love sessions I created with one of my friends, and we said we were going to be supporting each other when we were experiencing some things we were going through. And even when we shared some of the things that were going on in our lives, we were moaning and saying, oh, gosh, it's so hard. God, it's bad. You know, or you just go in meditation, and you think you're meditating, but you're basically just... Oh, feeling your pain and your suffering. And oh, I can't, my thoughts don't leave me. What do you do in that moment? You know, sometimes some, someone would say, you get mad and you shift the energy. You say, I'm going to do this. And you start dancing, you start moving your body or you start packing the old things or start releasing things even physically. Whatever you do, you move the energy. But listen to the guidance of your soul, which tells you, you know, do that. Move the energy. We need to constantly move the energy because we're constantly shifting. And the perception of stuck is just that. It's just perception. In that time, notice yourself, observe yourself, and, and say, uh-oh, where did I lose the magic? Where did I stop shifting? Because I'm constantly shifting anyway. This is how you're creating your heart desires, through the magic, through the bliss that comes through your inner senses when you're creating in that void. So instead of fearing the void, shift through that. You know, we call this session, uh, <laughs> my friend, because I like the playful approach. I'm all about playfulness. It's not just about the being serious and observing. And then also how you shift the energy. You can do it a lot through a playful approach. So we call these sessions like shifting to shit. And uh, we know when it's something that feels so yucky in that moment, you totally embrace it. But then what? You shift the energy. You start moving your body. You start dancing. You start doing anything. That feels good to you in that moment and that again aligns you with your soul and then okay take the next step next step and then the next one and the next one and so it goes it's like constant flow and um one of the examples which i also described yesterday is um one of the things that um, it's a very simple example but can be a good representation of how we can uh, be in flow like at the river um, I remember on Sunday, I went to, to the store with my mom. 
I wanted to get rid of my cell phone because I don't have, um, I don't I want to have any obligations to it anymore and I'm practically not using it. And there was no one, no one at the halter. I'm looking, okay, it's open, but there's no one there. Okay, so I'll go to another store to buy something that I needed to buy. And then I'll return to see if the, there's anyone there. I return and there's still no one there. I'm looking at it, there's one moment, one, one minute, that I'm pondering and thinking and feeling. And my feeling said, there's going to be no one. It's not meant to be. And, you know, I had two timelines. Okay, multiversal, but I had basically two. And to choose, I can stay there and I can bump my head against the wall and say, oh my gosh, no one's here. What bastards? <laughs> you know, I need to do this. What's happening? The universe is against me. Or the other timeline, when I just feel neutrally and I say, Oh, it's not in my flow. The flow is to leave. And I leave and I left. You see, and when we do that, we just listen to that flow. It is never, ever, ever, trust me, it is never difficult. It is us bumping our heads. It is us wanting to swim against the stream. It is us trying to make things difficult We have because we have a belief that it needs to be so. So we create the reality that is alignment with our beliefs. We can also transcend this. We can move the energy, we can shift the shit, we can, we can do so many things because all we need is to use the tools that are already within us. And this is not a motivational video. It is not one of those, yeah, go get it, do it, you know, you can do it. You are, are already are doing it. But a lot of the people are not aware enough of just how powerful they are. So I'm wishing you so much reconnection back with your true self, with your heart desires, with your heart space, where everything already is in the now. Take care. I love you lots. And I hope this video was assisting all those of you who are asking me those questions. But remember, this is just one part. You need to walk through the door on your own. I can just point towards them like I'm pointing to myself in my own life. So enjoy, and I'll talk to you next video. <laughs> Bye.